Look at those beauties. Doodle butt here. We're going to chat about ink. I just picked these up. So we'll do a an ink review and then I'll tell you how I feel me doing an ink review is completely pointless. Let's get to it. So first of all, why the purple dot? The purple dot because these were in the discount bin at the Vancouver Pen Shop. I'm all about getting deals. So, uh, you know, just walking past checking stuff up and uh, yellow. I saw this in there. And next to this was this guy. 30% off. Score. Done. Deal. Gone. Here we are. Let's try them out. And, uh, yeah, let's just crack the tops. Ugh. Try not to spill, do the bud. Okay. Just so you can see it in the bottle. It's cool looking green. Oh, I'm going to bump it. There. And then uh, we'll get to putting some ink on paper. Looks pretty. Excited to use it. Makes me think of bees. All right, let's keep going. All right. So I thought let's just get right to it, not bore you with watching me write, because that's not what this video is all about. But here it is. I'd say here's olive green, and it's more yellowy than green, so whatever. It's got some cool coloring to it, some shading, blah, blah, blah. Here's Robert Oster, ride green. Same thing, cool shading, pleasant color. Thinking a fresh forest kind of feel. And uh, yeah, looks cool. You know, I tried it out. Yeah, you could smudge it. So careful about that. My fingers are dirty. I was put my magic rub on chicken for dinner tonight. Um, but after that, you know, you might want to know what the dry time is, saturation, feathering, all that kind of stuff. But the big thing you want to know is, what does it look like? What color is it? They say olive green, but that's quite yellow. So this is where we start to have a big time problem. What color, in fact, are these inks? And what I found is you will never know until you see it with your own eyes. Let's talk about why. So first of all, I'm not trying to say ink reviews are pointless and people who do them don't know what they're talking about. That is not what I'm saying. Mountain of Ink, whoever you are, your website is awesome. But there's just a lot of problems with trying to show you what color this is in your own eye when you see it so you know. it's in, The only uh, thing I would ever consider doing are comparing colors of similar type similar shades, similar colors. So if I was doing this green today, I'd need to do like four, five, six greens all around it in all different ways, different directions, darkers, lighters, brighters, all that stuff for you to get like a real read on what this looks like and hoping that you have one or two in that list. But just on its own, it is so tough to properly represent to you what color this is. Let's talk about why that is. There's a bunch of reasons. First up, from the graphics department is lighting. So as you all know, the color that you're seeing right now is what is being reflected off the page. Everything else is being absorbed. So there's gonna be several wavelengths, all right? Not just one wavelength, these aren't lasers. Um, so what's gonna impact that color being reflected is the ambient color around it. You can see here, we got different shades of white. Um, so the light temperature that is illuminating this room, right? I got to illuminate the room or else we wouldn't see it to prove to prove to you. Ha <laughs> ha. You need light to see things. Experiment done. So if I have what's called a bright white or soft white or daylight bulb in here, that's going to change the color that's being reflected that is impacting it. Hmm. So unless we can all agree on exactly what lighting we're using for all the videos, we're going to have a problem. Next one, the camera sensors. So typically this is being done on phones and cameras and stuff like that. We're not using scanners. Some people might scan it, then the oh, total different technology. Now, this could be about an eight-year course talking to you about a camera sensor and what goes on. So I'll just sum it up in about a few more seconds and just say there is a lot that goes on to manufacturing a CMOS camera sensor from the growing of the semiconductor, doping the crystal to make the semiconductor, to how you program what happens in little clusters of the tiny photosensitive cells. Uh, you can greatly impact 
what the sensor is going to do with colors. White balance. And you can see we have different white. So white balance is super important because white is all of the colors of that visible spectrum. Okay, so everything's getting reflected off of these pages, but they're not quite the same, right? So that's that kind of goes part and parcel with the lighting, but then a different temperature light on a different temperature paper. <laughs> We're smoking something now. Uh, so that's a massive difference whenever you take pictures or video or whatever you're using because whether you're telling the sensor and your software that this is all the colors that or this color is all of the colors will have a massive impact and i'm going to do a quick live science experiment to show you stay here we go we're going to do a magic trick right in front of your eyes so the montegrappo montegrappa elmo Crisocola, beautiful color from uh, Goulet pens. It was an exclusive. So I look at this pen that I'm seeing on my display on my smartphone, and I look at the real pen. They're very different. Why? Because white balance. So the sensor's like, this is white. And I come along and say, no, this is all the colors. Whoa, it's like a tie-dye shirt. It's like a chameleon. Uh, blue pen. Green pen, mind. <sighs> and this should be no surprise. All the post editing and filtering. I mean, you just gotta smooth out the wrinkles, you know, and just get that shine and shimmer going. So yeah, you can make this thing look pink if you wanted, you know. So any little slight tweak to the uh, original data coming in is going to have an effect on all your colors as well. Obviously, if you haven't figured this one out, your display, what are you looking at this stuff through? Uh, is it on a smartphone? Which smartphone? Which model? When? <laughs> what firmware update? Uh, what settings do you have on it? You can change all that stuff. Also, uh, maybe you're looking at this on a laptop. Crazy type of different display. You go on your big screen TV. Is it in cinematic mode or gaming mode, all that stuff. There's a million tweaks and, and uh, little knobs and dials that you can tweak on there to get the color that you think looks great to your eye. And so we can do everything on, on the creator's end to make it look what we think is representative, but then we have lose complete control on what happens on the viewer's end. So we're really screwed on that case. How do we fix this, dude, bud? Well, surely... If we all use standardized, light, standardized lighting, you know, those 6,000 Kelvin bulbs at home, Homie Depot that I see, let's get those. So everyone's got the same color. We're going to all use the exact same one sensor. All are calibrated. Okay. White balance. We'll all have a special calibrated white balance card. And we're going to calibrate our sensors off that white balance card. You do that in real life when you're dealing in this industry with uh, video and, you know, imagery. Uh, no post editing. The raw data is exactly what it should be. So don't edit. And then, oh, everyone, every viewer, whoever views anything, will all have the exact same calibrate calibrated display. Okay, if we do all of that, which we could, we could in theory. Are we still gonna? Are we the? Is the color gonna be the same same to everyone viewing it? So if ten thousand people look at that color at the same time, all this taken care of. Are they going to say, oh, that looks exactly like this particular other color? No. Now we got so many diff differentiations in the human eye as well. So just like people, we're all different. So are our eyes. So, you know, the, the colors come down to the rods, the cones for, for low, low light. So the number of rods you have and also the balance. So if, you're, if you have, this guy has more in the red region, this lady's more more green, this one's more blue, right? That's gonna, that can offset what the person sees. But don't forget, um, there's also differences that just from eyeball to eyeball and, and some genetics sometimes. There's this thing, you know, seeing the three colors is called trichromacy, trichromatic vision. But, you know, some people are gifted. We're all a little different. We're all snowflakes, right? There's tetrachromacy, tetrachromatic vision. So, this is someone, there's people out there who got extra rods, not just like more, they have another color. What? Uh, it's more prevalent in women. So just genetics there, uh, it's about 
estimated around from testing about 12% of women are tetrachromatic. And it's a big difference. It's you go from seeing about a million different colors to a hundred million. So that's that's a lot more. I'm at man, I'm wondering what like a super HD million K screen looks like if you're tetrachromatic. <laughs> so just from person to person in that regard, that's a huge change. Uh, where else can we mess up? Depending what language you speak. I'm uh, primarily English here, uh, but different languages have different words for different colors. And I know even, I was reading something, I, I believe it was in Russia, they have better definitions in, or like more gradients for darker blues. There's just more words in that language to describe it so you can be more precise. <laughs> ah, language can impact what you see. And yet another one, it's called color constancy. So it's this effect that we have once our brain, because our brain is doing everything. It's getting the data and telling, creating an image of what, what it's seen. And it's trying its best representation to do that. But you can fool it. So there's something called color constancy. So what it means is it's, it knows that thing. It's been sort of programmed into the brain. And I know it's that color. So that's the color I'm going to see. What are, you, what are you talking about, doodlebud? Well, time for another science experiment. Strap in. Okay, prepare to have your mind blown once again. Here's a, a picture. Here's an image. And I, th I think we all know what that is. Juicy berry, strawberry. Okay. Now, that color, they're red. Strawberries are red, unless they're, you know, not ripe yet. Right? But a nicely ripened strawberry is red. And we look at this one and we go, it looks a little ill, but it's red for sure. It's just a different red. Would you be surprised if I told you there is not even one red pixel in that entire image? If you don't believe me, here is something is called a histogram. So I did a histogram of this image and it shows you all the colors of the rainbow. All the colors that are in this image, there isn't one red pixel. And I'll zoom in. Okay, you can do it too. You can cover like with your hand. And if you really look at that little slice, that little sliver, You'll see, holy crap, there's no red pixels in there. And it doesn't look red at all now. But then if you go back out to the full picture, it's red. That's an effect of color constancy. Okay, so how do we wrap this up here? What do we do now, doodlebud? Well, I just wanted to show you why I'm not big into doing uh, ink reviews. You know, if you want to you know, do one for different properties, what are faster drying or good for permanent inks, that's fine. But when it comes to in regards of color, unless I might do one where I take all my greens or all my blues, but that would be it just where you can see it. But otherwise, I, I'll let other people do it. Um, they have more fun doing them. Uh, for all the reasons I showed you, that's why this topic would just drive me nuts. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Um, so I'll stick to pens because the cool thing for me with pens is, you know, we can look at this and I can give you dimensions, right? Exactly what flat blackness is that? That's going to be up for debate, but the mechanical properties of it, threads, you know, how the nib comes out, and we can do weights and measures, all that type of stuff. We can do compare with as far as line widths and smoothing, or if it has flex, all those kind of things. Manufacturing, we can pick up on things like that, knurling, and all those cool things. Um, and those are definitive things and measurable and stuff like that, and comparative. So, when it comes to ink colors, I'm, I'm probably not going to be your boy, but that's all right. But check out Mountain of Ink. Great resource. You know, same with Goulet Pens. They got some good stuff on there, too. In the comments, maybe, leave uh, your favorite place to check out what you found was best. Who does the best job of representing what this is to what it is and what it ain't? Thanks for stopping by. Catch you next time.